Greetings everyone, I am Iris V. Before starting the video, I want to thank everyone that commented on my last video, especially those who let me know how crazy my theory was, and those that had discussions with me and corrected mistakes I made within my video. While I do do research for my videos, I am sometimes incorrect when I do my research, or I miss some things. I am only one person after all, so I thank my community for keeping me on my toes. Otherwise, this video is not meant to critique the game. The intention of this video is to spark discussion about the state that Kavaris is in, and I really want to ask everyone how they feel about the game in its current point. I will purely be sharing how I feel about things in this video. I hope to spark some conversation about the game from this video, both positive towards the game and negative. Let's start with story content. I honestly think that story content is above and beyond in Kavaris at least compared to what we had prior. I genuinely really love the five new characters that were introduced in Kavaris that may be recurring characters, and I think all of them are very well designed, and are very very well done. I really want to see more of them. That said, while a lot of world building was done in Kavaris, not a lot of progression on the Medion was done, and I do think that the Medion and the Medion's party need to be addressed some more, and that includes Ananim, and that includes Aina and Manon getting more plot development, and just getting more development in general. I personally feel that the five new characters are leagues ahead of Aina and Minor, of Aina and Minon, of Aina and Manon. Now let's move into content. I want to start by talking about weapons, and many people have different opinions on the weapons of Kaveras, mainly Kaiser and the Rug series. Now, unlike a lot of people, I actually think that the grind required for the Kaiser series is actually quite reasonable. The reason for that is, I think the cold is a bit of a trap augment. You don't really need to build all out for the ancient enemies, and how much are you contributing to a 32 person brawl? That aside, I really want to more so talk about how the Rug series affects the Kaiser series, and how I think that's killed motivation to actually grind for Kaiser for a lot of people, along with the fact there's no carryover from Rocks to Kaiser. I don't really think that it's a good thing that the Rug series is straight up strong for Kaiser, and leagues in the case of the Pursuit unit. The other units are fairly close to Kaiser, which I think is actually fine. I think if anything, the Pursuit unit of the Rug series actually needs a bit of a nerf, as it just adds way too much damage to the table. But TLDR, I think it would be better, and I think people would be more comfortable with Kaiser existing if the two series were a bit closer together. That said, I think it's an amazing thing that Kaiser is in the game, and that we finally have a progression-based weapon, because I do not regard farming for hours on end for a random drop as a progression type scenario. Progression usually assumes that you're making progress, and if you're farming for a random drop, you're never making progress. The chance of the item dropping is always the same, there's no bad luck protection. If there was bad luck protection, there would be a progression there, but there isn't. Moving on to grinding and ancient enemies. Now I actually think that the grinding routes in the game currently are fairly reasonable, though I do think that Blizzardium needs a more available source. Maybe the Dark Falls Interception should be dropping them. Otherwise, I don't have much opinion on it. While there are multiple things for you to grind, it's all about choosing your battles. Choosing which one you want to grind for at any given time. And I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing. Though I know that choice is daunting to a lot of people and can make it a struggle to choose what to do, especially when group content makes farming for some of these materials faster. So I think there probably needs to be a smaller gap between solo play and group play. Group play should always be encouraged in a game like this and should always give an advantage to people that go for it. I reckon. Whereas solo play should be more prestigious and look at actual personal achievements like solo sodom. But as for ancient enemies, the sheer amount of them that we have to grind and they're basically giant bullet sponges might need to be toned down just a little. I don't really know how to feel about ancient enemies from a grinding perspective and just from a fighting them perspective in general. It's PSO2. We expect to fight the same enemy over and over and over again. That is fairly normal for the game and that is just how the game happens, but I personally don't think that they really do enough for them to really be special. While it is fairly easy to grind them, hopping from gorge to gorge, you still do need to grind quite a lot of them, and this can be fairly taxing in my opinion. On to Dark Falls, I think Dark Falls is kind of a write-off. I'm not personally interested in even attempting it, and I have seen my friends attempt it and succeed in doing it with barely any gear or progress into the game, and it can be completed with 6 star weapons. But it brings everything into question, why are you even fighting this boss? 
why are you even grinding this equipment that you know is gonna soon be replaced? I think that the idea that everyone should be able to do a piece of content versus a piece of content being prestigious and actually require equipment to do is being a bit lost in translation here. I think that it's okay if a certain bit of equipment requires those seven star weapons to complete and the fact it doesn't, at least without great effort, at least in my opinion, truly invalidates progression by giving you nothing to work for. Sure, you get the shiny weapon, but what are you using it on? What challenge are you trying to overcome with said new weapon? What's the point of investing into an expensive new weapon, or a unit series for that matter, if there's nothing pressing that will challenge those units or weapons? Sure the GL app still exists and I'm really happy it got updated to level 60, but I just want to put this into perspective that nothing new really supports supports the weapons that have been dropped and the weapons have been dropped into an ecosystem that doesn't support them. On to leveling loot. I actually personally have no complaints about the leveling loot. As it stands I can get all my characters up to level 51 and just farm them all out in North Central. And from level 52 onward I can use the yellow battle tier to really get XP if I really wanted to. With alliance quests in the game it makes that very easy to do so as well. So I don't have a complaint here and I think the leveling loop has improved a great deal. Let's look a bit ahead though. In two days we'll be getting the NGS headline and the headline will be putting quite a few things on board as well as announcing new content hopefully. Maybe we'll even get a summoner reveal. I'm looking forward to the future of NGS and I really want to enjoy it with everyone else. Hopefully something really comes out again to really get my personal spark going as for whatever reason I've been having trouble being motivated to play NGS again from since Kavera started. Hopefully now that I've taken a day break I can really start getting into NGS again. Though it doesn't help my friend is taking me away to Shirai Calamity but I've been RSV. What are your opinions on Kavera's? How do you feel about it? And I'll see you next time.